Elkhorn Slough is a busy place, divided by heavily trafficked Highway 1 and including a large working marina, adjacent power plant, and many businesses providing kayaks and other recreational activities. It is also where sea otters have chosen to live in larger concentrations than anywhere else south of Alaska. Coming to visit the slough, you are guaranteed to see lots of otters as well as a big sea lion colony and many birds. The otters have become such an attraction that kayakers began to threaten their survival by inadvertently disturbing them. But this is a relatively new story. It wasn't very long ago that southern sea otters were thought to be extinct and not a single one was to be seen here. Sea otters once ranged all along the North Pacific Rim and the estimated population is somewhere between 150,000 to 300,000. The maritime fur trade really took off, hunting sea otters all along the Pacific Rim. The fur coat was so luxurious that it just was very much in demand, brought a pretty high price, and as a result, they're hunted nearly to extinction. By the time the fur trade ended, just a few dozen otters survived off the coast of Big Sur, and that was probably just an accident of geography. The coast was so rugged that it's likely that the fur hunters just couldn't find any good, safe anchorage to mount expeditions from. Every single southern sea otter alive today is a relative of those original sea otters that toughed it out and managed to evade capture all those years ago. People in the U.S. thought there were no more sea otters in the lower 48, and just a few people knew that there were. The state of California had a few biologists that were aware that sea otters were still alive. There were a few residents of Big Sur who could look right off their coast and see that there were sea otters there. The state protected them in 1913, declared them a fully protected mammal, but still most people didn't know about them at all, and that was kind of by design because there was a fear that they would be killed for their fur if people found out. In 1938, the world at large discovered that sea otters were still alive in California. Bixby Bridge had been completed and Highway 1 in Big Sur, and people could look down and see this large raft of sea otters. And Life magazine came out and took some pictures that are very famous now and memorialized this rediscovery. The headline of that story was, The Extinct Sea Otter Swims Back to Life. Sea otters became a protected species and a refuge was established in 1941, encompassing about 100 miles of coastline from Carmel to Cambria. As with many other threatened and endangered species, the sea otters have had some bumps on the road to recovery, with conflicts from shellfish fisheries and slow growth of a translocated population. Over the years, the otter population in California increased by an average of 5% a year, and the current population is about 3,000, with many of them living in Elkhorn Slough. A group of people that belong to the Southern Sea Otter Research Alliance got together and formed a working group in response to an outcry about the level of human disturbance to sea otters in the Central Coast. As a sea otter biologist, I observed it a lot while I was tracking wild sea otters and, and just really was at a loss at what to do. And that was sort of how everyone felt. We didn't really know what the best course of action was to take. Was it gonna be education? Was it gonna be stronger enforcement? By far the most disturbance on the water to sea otters occurs by kayak. People are really taking to the water in huge numbers on the central coast, and the places that are most suitable, especially for novice kayakers to start, are these embayments, harbors, bays, and these are also places where sea otters like to live. And so we have an overlap between these recreation opportunities and sea otter habitat. They're a warm-blooded animal. They're mammals just like us, living in a very cold environment. And so their whole struggle day to day is really founded in staying warm. So that's why they have to eat a lot. They're stoking a very high metabolism that runs pretty hot. They have this fur layer that insulates them, but they don't have a fat layer that helps as both insulation and a way to store energy. So understanding that sea otters don't store energy well is one of the first 
things you need to know in understanding why disturbance is harmful because they're always kind of operating at just at the energy level that they need to get through the day. So if a kayak approaches too closely, they want to get a picture, they want to get a selfie, and they cause those otters to dive and swim away, that's energy expended. And it's also energy taken away from their important resting time. And if that happens once, that's probably not going to be harmful to those otters that don't see many people throughout the day. But here, where they're encountering kayakers every day, day after day, throughout the entire day, they can be disturbed every hour, sometimes as many as 20 times a day. And our data show that it takes them about 15 minutes to recover back to their resting state. So they have to go through a grooming period, they have to put all their fur back in place, takes them a long time to do that, then they get settled down, and then the next person comes along, causes a disturbance, and they go through that process over again. So you can imagine that those 15 minute active intervals really can add up pretty quickly. Um, it's rough for these guys that are mostly males, they're not taking care of pups. It can be absolutely devastating to females because they're already putting a lot of energy and attention into rearing their little pups. They're at the very edge of their survival in terms of their nutritional state and causing them to flush and move away can be devastating. And sometimes boaters can even get in between, separate moms and pups. They really are very charismatic carrying their pup with them and people kind of want to chase them down to get that video and they just don't recognize that, that they're potentially doing harm to those animals. Well, what we really believe is that because most people don't intentionally want to cause harm, that a little bit of education, a little bit of knowledge can go a long way. Monterey Bay Kayaks is an ecotourism company. We've been operating here in the Monterey Bay for uh, a little over 30 years. We have this wealth of wildlife where we've got seals, sea lions, otters, different migrating bird species. It's really important for us to make sure that the resources that people come to see and that we rely on are also protected. By talking to one of their staff people, I'm sharing the message with the hundreds of people that they'll be talking to throughout the season. So we talk about the fact that this is these animals' homes. You know, so they're out here to survive. Everything they do is to make sure that they can live and raise their young. And we're out here to enjoy ourselves and to have an amazing experience. For us to do that, for us to continue to do that, we need to make sure that we're not making it difficult for them to live. We give in-person orientations to everybody that comes in. You know, we don't make them watch a video. We talk to everybody individually. People don't really know what appropriate behavior from wildlife is. Something that, you know, a researcher or someone who's very familiar with these animals sees as a warning sign people think of as cute. We like to keep people about five boat lengths, which is about 60, 70 feet away from the wildlife. We wanna make sure that we're not approaching resting wildlife, having to change their behavior. And it's that behavior change that's really the big deal. We're all neurobiologists, so as fundamental biologists, encountering nature and the natural biology of the Monterey Bay was a real highlight for us. You love the encounter, but you want to encounter it responsibly. To respect the animals is a key facet. Humans and otters can cohabitate. It does take work, though. Otters are incredibly curious animals, accustomed to humans very easily. And that's not safe for people or for the otters. It comes down to education of businesses that operate in that capacity. It comes down to them educating the people that they're sending out on the water. So it's finding those points of entry and we really encourage people to come into the shop before they go out. Uh, they can even go on one of our orientations where we talk about the map and the wildlife. Like we would love to be able to spread this to anybody going on the water, not just people that are you know, going through our company. They really have set a standard and it's great because other companies coming in after them really have to sort of meet that, that high standard that they've set. So the other folks around here are, are also doing a really great job and take it very seriously and, and really do a good job of training their guides, which I think is one of the most important things that they can do. The Elkhorn Slough Safari has been out here for decades. He's really done a great job. They are super respectful to the sea otters. One of the great parts about having uh, young naturalists that often also volunteer with other uh, institutions here, the aquarium or uh, the Moss Landing Marine Lab or um, the Marine Mammal Center. These people are all out there working with experts in that field and bringing that knowledge to our business here.
Sea otters are a keystone species in the marine environment, which means just a few animals can have a large effect. And in kelp forests, what they do is eat large numbers of sea urchins, which allows the kelp to increase in distribution and abundance, which benefits hundreds of other species that depend on kelp for food or habitat or shelter. The connection between sea otters and sea urchins and kelp is a, a trophic cascade that's now a textbook example, and that was discovered by Jim Estes in the 70s. A much more recent and even more complicated trophic cascade occurs right here in the Elkhorn Slough estuary. So what you see over on my shoulder here is a raft of sea otters sleeping in a bed of eelgrass. Uh, the seagrass is a really important piece of this ecosystem. It uh, not only provides excellent habitats for a huge variety of fish and vertebrates, uh, but also it provides a physical structure in the mud where with its roots it's trapping down the sediment. That's what makes the sea otters the heroes is because they're a keystone species and it's actually due to their impact that we even have the eelgrass thriving here in the Elkhorn Slough. It's called a trophic cascade but ultimately it's a domino effect through the ecosystem. With these otters eating more of the crabs here in the Elkhorn Slough, uh, that allows for more sea slugs, in particular the Taylor sea hare. But with more Taylor sea hares, they are then able to eat the algae that would otherwise smother and kill the eelgrass, thus we have more eelgrass beds. And it turns out that's a really important feature, not just for the Elkhorn Slough, but there's oceanic species of fish that will use the eelgrass beds as a nursery site. They'll come in and lay their eggs, uh, so it actually has a far-reaching impact. Sea otters' ancestors entered the marine environment three to five million years ago. And since that time, they have been co-evolving with all the other species. Compare that to humans who have only been in North America for about 20,000 years. So sea otters are fundamental to these marine ecosystems. And when they're taken out of them, it falls apart. To hear someone cautioning another kayaker, oh, five kayak lengths away, that's very rewarding because that means my words and my passion has been translated to that person that I've never talked to. To give people this opportunity to see the wildlife, to be a part of it, I think it's really important. I think if you don't give people that opportunity, then they'll never build the empathy they need to care about these animals. Our wildlife is right here, and you can see the behavior that I'm talking about. I get a lot of kids that come out of the boat saying that I want to work at the Elkhorn Slough Safari. I want to do what he does. Um, I want to go and be a marine biologist. Mm-hmm.